Hey guys, welcome back to We Watch Movie. I am Mike, and it feels like we haven't done one of these in a minute. So, how the hell are you guys doing? How's your day going? How's your life going? And uh, I just want to be in you. I'm. I, we've got new movie updates, and I'm very, very excited for them. Texas Chainsaw Massacre is finally back in the news. We loved it. We had a blast with it. I understand it's not for everybody. And was it perfect? No. That Sally Sally Hardesty crap. You can shove that right back in the oven because it's not cooked. It's not a perfect movie, but I thought it had great gore. I thought it had awesome kills in it. I thought Leatherface was cool. I. I love the cinematography of the movie. The music to it was cool. Gnarly kills. I just had a blast with it. I thought it was an easy, short, quick, fun movie to watch. And I found myself re-watching it three or four times. We have a full commentary on our Patreon. Which, by the way, if you guys are interested in checking out, we do a ton of stuff on Patreon. In the link below, you can check it out for free. So today's news comes from multiple places. Uh, first off, it comes from Daniel Rickman. I don't know if I'm saying your name right, dude. Uh, but he's a, he's an insider. And you know us, we don't talk about stuff when it's like, oh, a rumor. Don Cheadle is up for Scream 7 director right now. If you listen to anything on Twitter or the internet, they'll tell you whatever as long as they can put out some stuff about it. You know how we feel about that. But Rickman is different. He is, he is a very seasoned, been around for a long time. Does that mean everything that comes out from any scoop that's not like an official, like ironclad source real or 100% true? Fuck no, it doesn't. But it does have a little bit more weight to it coming from him and the fact that Bloody Disgusting reported on it and they even said that while they don't normally report on this kind of thing, they have been hearing as well that a new Texas Chainsaw Massacre is in development. They couldn't confirm the plot synopsis I'm about to give you, but it all seems like it's got some some smoke to the fire. So I don't know if this plot synopsis is real or not. I just know that this is what's in the wings right now. So the film is set to explore the seemingly peaceful facade of Oasis Oaks, a gated community in rural Texas. Rural Texas. Within the manicured lawns and vigilant security... <laughs> With the manicured lawns and vigilant security, a protagonist family enjoying suburban bliss becomes entangled in a harrowing battle for survival as they confront the infamous Leatherface and his macabre kin in an abandoned property nearby. <laughs> Now, we know how 2022 left us and teased us. They, they left us with Leatherface walking down a path and ending up at his old childhood home. And... There's no confirmation. Someone even asked him in the comments of this, hey, is this like a prequel or is it a sequel? What's going on? And he's like, no confirmation yet. All we know is that there's a movie in the works and this is the synopsis for it, allegedly. So we don't know if this is supposed to follow up that movie or not, but I'll say this. I feel like there's a good chance that it could. Like this synopsis leads you off. It's like, wait, he went back to his family home. There's none of that here. What the fuck, Bruce? And first off, my name's not Bruce and I'd appreciate if you had the respect to me about my name. Secondly, because they mentioned in here that they must confront the infamous Leatherface and his macabre kin on an abandoned property nearby, number one. Number two, look at what the first movie did. It took all these, all these TikTok, like, you know, influencer generation people that are just like trying to do good, but they're trying to do too much good. And there's a play on the whole wokeness and social justice warriors and all that, right? But the way this reads is that these people kind of have the same mindset. To me, it sounds like these suburban people are, are those people that are about to get fucked up. And the movie's going to have something to say about that. Just in the way it reads within the manicured lawns of vigilance and vigilant security, a protagonist family. They call him the protagonist of the film. The protagonist family enjoying suburban bliss becomes entangled in a harrowing battle for survival. So to me, this could be like you've got this uppity community or whatever that they're really driving the point home that they are better off or whatever they're going to do with that, that tale. And then the, the crusty butt leather face is going to come in there. So it seems like the same wavelength that they were on in 2022 for that. Plus the fact that they mentioned the family is going to be in there a little bit. And we did see him go back to the house. I think these two things could tie in. Maybe when he gets back, there's a suburban thing down the street. They're trying to gentrify the area or whatever, all that shit that just, the wavelengths there tie in for me. Another reason is we also know the movie did well on Netflix. It was like over the first couple weeks, it was one of the most viewed Netflix films of all time. So we know that it did well there. We also know that David Blue Garcia, the director, has said that he would love to do a sequel. He said he had several ideas for some a while back and we haven't heard anything about it since. My biggest guess is that, and this is just a guess, if this is true, that the 2022 film, it's gonna be the follow-up to that and Fede Alvarez is gonna be involved in it and that I think the first 
hint we'll get of it comes when Fede Alvarez goes on, if he's still involved with it, will come during the Alien Romulus press tour, which Alien Romulus is set to come out August 16th. It's going to be directed by Alvarez. A lot of times, you guys know how it is. They like to do that. They go on a press circuit. They talk about another movie. It just adds news. It adds eyeballs to the project. And I think for sure, someone on a press junket will ask and we'll finally have our answer as to whether or not this is official, if Fede Alvarez is included in, in it and what's going on. So if by nothing else, the press tour for Alien Rhymeless, which is in August, so you think it'd be like June or July sometime, I think we'll have word on something official if that's the case. But what do you guys think? Do you want to see a follow-up to that? What do you guys want to see? I thought it was fun. I love it. Put it in my veins, Jim. Suck the day's dick. In other news, this people are not going to like my opinion on this one. People are going to say, how the fuck are you going to be excited about that and not about this? And I'll tell you why. Saw 10, Saw 11, Bloody Disgusting has exclusively learned that Kevin Grudert is returning to direct Saw 11. So Saw 11 has a director, and it's Kevin Grudert. And Kevin Grudert is the one who directed the beloved Saw 10 that everybody loved so much. I liked it a little less than others, but I still enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was the best Saw movie in a while, for sure. He also directed Saw 6, and he directed Saw the Final Chapter. He's edited the entire thing from Saw 1 all the way through Jigsaw. He edited all those movies. He directed Saw 10. He's coming back for this one. And a lot of people are going to be super pumped about this. And the reason I am actually not personally, like I'm happy for him. I'm happy that's happening. I hope the movie is great and it kicks ass and everybody loves it. But I'm skeptical and here's why. I would have rather had some new blood in there. And the reason why is this. I think the special parts of Saw 10 were actually all in the writing, in the story. And we know for a fact that Stolberg and the writers of 10 are not coming back. They announced that early on after Saw 11 was announced. He's like, no, by the way, we're not coming back, which seems like an odd choice. It makes you think that maybe they were working on writing that while the film was going on. I don't know. They already had a script and a story ready to go. But the writers are not coming back. And the same director's coming back. And to me, what was special about Saw 10 wasn't the direction. I mean, you have to have a solid direction to make a good movie. I understand that. But like, it was the writing. It was the fact that we we actually had a reason to to be on Jigsaw's side. But when in the previous movies, I just don't think they did a good job about that. It was constantly just like, I'm just sick of people who drink Mountain fucking do and don't appreciate life. I know they tried to do so much more than that, but they never really landed the point for me until Saw 10. But it was him going back and seeing what he went through with, with them fucking him over and actually really understanding why he wanted to do to these people what he was doing to them that made that movie good. It gave you a, a character that you could really care about even though you know he becomes a super giant piece of shit later on with terrible fucking motives in that scope and that one thing like it, it, it worked but i still feel like the movie now there's a comfort to that like you want some of the same stuff you know like the the, the classic saw isms or whatever but i don't know it just felt some of the traps and some of the other stuff just felt like hey same old saw you know like a same old another saw movie this one just had a really good story and a really great reason to exist for the first time in a while and i just don't think a lot of what was great about saw 10 had to do with the direction so i was kind of hoping for some new blood to come in and maybe add their own spin on this and kind of keep this run going i'm not saying it's going to be bad i'm not saying anything like that i'm just saying that's kind of how i feel for it. i'm like okay so i know we're probably in for more of the same at best, and we'll see what happens. I hope I'm wrong. I hope the movie fucking rules. I hope your day rules, and let me know how you guys feel about this. I love your all's fucking faces, and I hope you guys have an amazing day. Be gentle to yourselves and to me in the comments and with my dick. Here comes that white-faced fucker, an asshole like no other. He's a big old piece of shit. Wants to stab your sister's tits because he's a white-faced fucker. Loomis can't recover. Dr. Challenge drunk again. Sleeping with your sister's friends. Do you want to know about the darkness? I said God damn. God damn you, my Halloween never ends, suck my fucking dick, and I don't really care what Blumhouse fucking says. Put him in a box, or suck a fucking cock. You can say he's dead, but we all know he's not. Yeah. So let's go trick or treating, let's go fucking drinking, let's all go in pumpkin head on VHS.